untap your full potential with the untapped deck tracker. Both the in-game overlay and the personal stats provide a lot of value. Download it for free today using the link below and you'll be supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another standard game to video. Today we're taking a look at a blue-green flying squirrel deck as voted on by my supporters on Patreon, featuring Toski, Bearer of Secrets. The 4-mana 1-1 legendary creature squirrel from Kaldheim is indestructible and cannot be countered, and Toski has to attack each combat if able, and whenever any creature we control deals combat damage to a player, we get to draw a card. So a very powerful ability that's especially powerful alongside token makers or creatures with flying. Now we could be playing Toski in the popular Naya Adventures build with Showdown of the Skulls and Clarion Spirit, but instead I opted to go into blue to put my own spin on it, and one card in particular that synergizes very nicely with Toski is Alrun's Epiphany. The 7 mana Mythic Rare Sorcery creates two 1 1 bird tokens with flying, and we get to take an extra turn after this one. So the bird token's already very synergistic with Toski, and then getting to take an extra turn potentially represents a ton of extra card advantage, and then we can also potentially foretell it by paying the 2 mana up front to later get a 1 mana discount, and we've got quite a bit of a ramp in the deck as well to get up to 7 mana for Alrun's Epiphany. And then another blue card that you may not be expecting in this deck is Stormwing Entity, since it doesn't look like we have a ton of instants and sorceries to enable it. The 5 mana 3-3 three, three elemental with flying and prowess costs 2 and a blue less to cast if we've cast an instant or sorcery spell this turn, and when it enters a battlefield we also get to scry 2. But if you take a closer look at our creatures, a lot of them have adventures attached to them, so we can first use the adventure half and then cast a creature afterwards, and the adventure will enable our Stormwing Entity, since they're all instants and sorceries, and a rose Thorn Acolyte in particular is incredibly synergistic with Entity, as we get to use the Seasonal Ritual for single green and then add one mana of any color, so as early as turn 2 we can use Seasonal Ritual, potentially filter it into blue mana, and then cast our Storming Entity for 2 mana, so that's a very powerful start that our deck is capable of. Acolyte typically not a creature you see in adventure decks in Constructed, but the Seasonal Ritual paired with the fact that it's a mana creature that can ramp us into Epiphany makes it a worthy inclusion in this deck. Then taking a look at the rest of the deck, we are playing lots of adventure creatures, so it makes sense that we include Edgewall Innkeeper 1 mana 1 1, saying whenever we cast a creature spell that has an adventure we get to draw a card. Then we also have the full play set of Just Para Sentinel, 1 mana 1 2 elf with reach, can tap alongside an untapped creature we control to add 1 mana of any color, so it gives us a bit of ramp, gives us an early board presence to potentially turn into card advantage once we play Toski, and being able to make more mana is also very useful when we're drawing a ton of cards, since that means we can empty your hand faster and get more stuff in play. Then at 2 mana we've got the full playset of Merrily Pixie, 2 mana 2-2 two, two flyer, that can tap for blue or green, so a nice evasive creature for Toski that can also generate more mana to ramp us towards Epiphany. Then we also have two copies of Fae of Wishes, which will sometimes just play as a 2 mana creature, one for flyer, so triggers our innkeeper and can set us up for Toski, but we can also use the Granted Adventure for 4 mana and search a non-creature card out of our sideboard and put it into our hand. So we could also potentially include a land here in the sideboard if we wanted to, but that shouldn't be necessary for the most part. Instead we've got a nice selection of one-offs to potentially search up. We've got Bubble Snare as removal, Run Afoul incredibly powerful against Goldspan Dragon, we've got Bean Veil against any Go White decks, Lofty Denial and Negate as counter spells, Unsubstantiate can be a bounce spell or a counter spell, Got Transformation as more removal, Wilt to deal with artifacts and enchantments, Raven Form can also come in handy against some difficult to deal with creatures or artifacts. We've got Barrier Breach if we're up against a Sanctum deck, for instance. Reconnaissance Mission is kind of like having a Toski, so that can also be a nice one to search up. Then Sleep is also legal in Best of One Standard, can be very powerful against other creature decks. Fastwood Surge can help us ramp and can potentially be kicked as well to put plus one counters on the team. And then we've got Vivian Monsters Advocate as a powerful planeswalker in a creature deck. And finally, Stolen by the Fae, a bound spell that maybe leaves behind a bunch of fairy tokens, which also synergize very nicely in our deck. So we've got a bunch of cards to potentially search up out of the sideboard, of course, a very customizable. Then at 3 mana we've got our adventure creatures with Acolyte that we already mentioned. We've got the Lovestruck Beast, can use the Heart's Desire for 1 mana, so that also plays nicely alongside our Storming Entity. And then a 5-5 five, five creature that requires a 1-1 one, one creature in play to attack. And between Edgewell Innkeeper, the 1-1 one, one token we get from the adventure, 
Toski and even the 1-1 one, one tokens from Alrun's Epiphany, there is usually a 1-1 one, one in play for the beast to attack. And then we also have the full set of Brazen Borrower, powerful adventure creature, can first use the Bound spell, and then a 3-1 flash creature afterwards, so also very nice alongside Toski. Then the full play set of Toski, and then Entity and Alrun's Epiphany to round out the deck, and then just 22 lands since we do have some mana creatures in the deck as well. So we've got 10 forests, 8 islands, and 4 of the blue-green pathway. So that's our deck, now let's jump in some games and see how the deck does. Alright, we're on the draw, facing a Yurion deck. This hand is mostly relying on Innkeeper to provide card advantage, but we do have a lot of adventure creatures, and if we draw Stormwing Entity or Toski, we'll be pretty happy. Opponent with a turn 1 Rune Crab, alright. So turn 1, typically want to play Sentinel over Innkeeper and then um, try to save Innkeeper until we can play it alongside an adventure creature to get our extra card right away in case of removal. Opponents mills us for three and foretells a card. Alright, so I can play Innkeeper and then either use Brazen Borrower or maybe Epiphany can be foretold. Yeah, that's probably fine here. And then next turn can maybe play Acolytes, trigger Innkeeper and start ramping towards Epiphany. Another Innkeeper, even better, so get to play Innkeeper into Acolytes. And if they counter the creature I still get to draw the cards. And then blue should be fine here. get to draw two, and if they counter Acolytes, we still get to draw. So we'd love to draw land for next turn, so we could potentially already cast Epiphany for six. No attacks. Opponent passes. And uh, Toski also a nice draw, although we'll have to be careful against the mill deck not to draw too many cards. Picked up a Lovestruck Beast, so won't be able to Alrun's Epiphany. Toski is uncounterable, so that seems like a fine play here if we expect it to get countered. Or we could just play an Adventure Creature, although I wouldn't be able to use the Heart's Desire first, otherwise if that gets countered I don't get to draw any cards from Innkeeper. So between Beast and Toski here is a decision. Getting to play Beast means we get to draw two, so I'm pretty likely to hit my land drop, so that's quite appealing. And then we'll wait an extra turn on Toski. Especially if they have a bounce spell, Toski wouldn't be very effective. Alright, there's a land and a Merleaf Pixie. Alright, so now could still play another Acolytes and keep developing my board. And then next turn maybe chain together Alrun's Epiphany. I've got 34 cards remaining. And I could attack for one damage, probably not worth it in case I have a flash creature that can block. It's gonna be Behold the Multiverse. Opponent's mono blue, so they may not have a sweeper here. Although if they suddenly play Swamp into Extinction Event, we're gonna be sad. So we'd love for them to tap out so we can resolve Epiphany. If not, Toski seems like the play. So yeah, I'll play Toski and attack. Toski resolves, and uh, yeah, I don't think I want to do anything else, so we'll just turn our creature sideways. Right, they're gonna Glacial Grasp the Beast. So does Acolyte attack or stay back to make mana, as our opponent casts an Opt. There is definitely an argument for getting more mana out there. 
So maybe we just send the two innkeepers and then again play double pixie. And keep going wide. All right, they have a mystical dispute. That one especially powerful against Alrun's Epiphany. This one will resolve. Yeah, I don't know if we can reliably resolve our time walk here. Although it would be nice, because then we can potentially just kill our opponents. Shark Typhoon Hardcast. That's going to be their death knell here. And so we get to play Epiphany. 23 cards remaining. Should be able to close out the game. Could also bounce the Shark Typhoon with Brazen Borrower. Oh yes. Have to discard to hand size. Probably don't need Toski anymore. And we get to Epiphany again. And our opponent explodes. Sweet. So yeah, had to be patient on the time walk, but Innkeeper put a lot of pressure on the opponent early to kind of force them to eventually tap out, and then we were able to close out the game. On to the next one. All right, we're on the play, and we've got a dream start here with turn one Innkeeper, turn two Adventure into Storming Entity. And then turn three, we can maybe play Acolyte to trigger Innkeeper. All right. Make a blue. And then just looking for more adventure creatures. Opponent on a snow covered plains. And now forest. And turn to aspirant. Alright, let's play acolyte and smash for three. Toski also an excellent pickup. So we can already start drawing extra cards with Entity, or we can maybe get the second copy and play first. Our opponent may be on a plus one counter synergy deck. Hopefully they don't have too many flying creatures. Although Stonecoil Serpent is one of them. Wildwood Scourge instead. So they've got some 3-3s. Aspirant attacks, I could double block. And then my opponent might end up killing Innkeeper. I don't hate that. Since we don't actually have any adventure creatures left in hand, so the Innkeeper's not that valuable. As I draw another Acolyte, which, you know, would have been nice, but still quite nice here. Anyway, since we get to adventure, play another two mana entity. And then Brazen Borrower's Excellence. And then probably just play another Acolyte over Sentinel. Hit for four. And then we're set up perfectly for Toski with double Entity and Brazen Borrower. If we find Alrun's Epiphany, we can cast it. There's a Stone Quill for four as we were afraid of. And we'll take four. So we can Toski, and then Brazen Borrower, Bouncing, Serpents. That seems good. Hit 
hit for eight, draw two. And another Brazen Borrower should be the final nail in the coffin, as we even get to run out our Sentinel. And our opponent explodes. Not much they could do here against one of our better draws. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw with a pretty nice opening hand. Just your typical adventure draw. Typically want to use Heart's Desire first and then play Innkeeper turn later. Although sometimes in this deck you want to keep Heart's Desire to enable Stormwing Entity, so it's a little different. And if turn two we just want to curve out and play Fae of Wishes, I think it's reasonable to just play turn one Innkeeper here. And then turn two most likely just play Fae of Wishes, draw a card, and then turn three I can decide to play Beast or we can go Heart's Desire into Stormwing Entity first. Mire Triton, that's fine. Opponent going big, maybe a reanimator deck of some sort. No attacks. So yeah, next turn Heart's Desire into Stormwing, and then we can play Beast after. In principle, I'm okay trading Fae of Wishes for Mire Triton, although Apparition gonna get rid of it, that's surprising that they didn't go for Innkeeper, but that works for me. Take two. And stick to the plan. And then Epiphany is a nice one to keep on top since we'll have extra mana from Sentinel, and then Acolyte is decent too since it both draws with Innkeeper but also ramps towards Epiphany. So I think Acolyte on top, since I'm most likely to just go Acolyte into Sentinel next turn. If something bad happens to Innkeeper, it's still not the end of the world. Of course we could also play Beast instead, but I think the extra mana will be more useful. Especially when there's a Death Touch Mire Triton blocking the Beast anyway. And now if our opponent ever gets to Ugin the Spirit Dragon, that's going to give us a lot of problems since we don't really have any haste creatures or removal. Sadly, Thirst deals with Innkeeper, so that's going to prevent some card draw. And a Throne of Death to fill the graveyard. So, probably stick to the plan here. And we might as well adventure to pump Storming Entity for one. And then next turn I'll be able to cast Epiphany already. And then if we ever find Toski, we'll have plenty of evasive creatures to go with it. Interesting attack. Might imply a Sweeper is incoming. Let's see if it's an Extinction event. It wouldn't be naming odd to get rid of most of my board. Uh, if it's Shatter the Sky, doesn't matter too much. Although then I guess I wouldn't want to block Apparition, because then we at least get a 2-2 token afterwards. So blocking like this probably makes sense. Maybe they just want to fill the graveyard for Throne of Death. But indeed, Shatter the Sky has expected. Well, at least we get a 2-2 token. So now... Beast won't be able to attack yet, but if I... Foretell Epiphany and draw land next turn, I could attack with a 5-5. And with the extra turn, that definitely adds up. So I think I still like playing Lostro Beast. And then hope to draw a land. Any land will do. Opponent's got 6 mana and is looking at their graveyard. Maybe they've got the Eerie Ultimatum to bring back a bunch of permanents from the graveyard, although that's 7 mana. So still 1 away. 
Meyer Triton will be able to block the beast, unfortunately. And a Brazen Borrower. Well, we can bounce Triton, but it's not like Beast gets to attack. So maybe we bounce Throne, but then it could replay Egon. But maybe that's okay. So I've got a few options, but either way, I'm okay trading the token here. Opponent takes it, and then... Let's see, what did they exile with Throne of Death? They exiled Mire Triton. So maybe they don't have Eerie Ultimate in them, because then they would have maybe exiled something else. Eh, I guess they need to exile a creature, so maybe that's still the worst creature for them. Yeah, I think we'll just pass and then see what our opponent does. Kicked Thirst on the Beast. Sadly, cannot bounce it with my own Petty Theft. So that works. Triton attacks, we'll take two. And then... End of turn, I think I'm bouncing the throne. Although they're gonna get to activate it here. To draw an extra card if they want. That's fine. We can apply quite a bit of pressure if we play Epiphany here. Alright. Now I could still wait a turn and get a second Borrower in place so we can attack even more when we're taking our extra turn, which I actually kind of like. Since if I deal 5, take extra turn, deal 7, they're not guaranteed dead. Whereas if they just play a 6-6, six, six, I get to bounce it, play another Borrower, and then the Flyers should be able to close out the game. So two cards in hand, one is known. Opponent may be deciding if they want to play Egon as a creature or as a artifact. It's going to be a creature. And binding the old gods. Going to destroy my Brazen Borrower, unfortunately. And there's not much I can do about it. So that happens. Well, we get to bounce Egon end of turn at least. And then... I guess our opponent's still dead here since they're taking 5 and then 7. And we even get to time walk again, not that we needed it. So it was pretty important that the Mar Triton attacked for us to have lethal. So pretty grindy game against Abzan here, but we still managed to get there. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw with a fine opening hand. Thanks to turn 1 Sentinel, we can still set up a turn 2 Stormwing Entity using the Heart's Desire Adventure. Finn the Fangbearer, so opponent on a Death Touch tribal deck. So Heart's Desire into Stormwing Entity. And then Epiphany. We're pretty far from casting, although it is going to be quite powerful in this matchup, making a bunch of 1 1 blockers. So I think I'm okay keeping both. Or maybe just keep Epiphany bottom land and hope to find mana creatures instead. Because we will get to draw with Innkeeper next turn. And while we could trade, we want to keep our Flyer alive. And then eventually block with our Beast on the ground. 
Agadim's Awakening untapped for a Nighthawk Scavenger. All right. So that will hold off my Stormwing Entity. So this turn we get to go Innkeeper into Beasts. And then probably don't want to attack with Entity anymore. Fine trading it for Scavenger. So eventually the 1-1 one -one tokens can maybe attack. I'm okay trading Beast for Finn, since it's not going to get to attack past any Death Touch creatures anyway. Ooh, Questing Beast? Alright. Well, now I'm pretty happy to trade for Questing Beast instead. And then we get to Adventure play Beast. And attack. And do we want to take more poison or trade? If they have another questing beast, I might want to keep my love struck around. Could also jump with a 1-1. One -one. I've got a few options. I think I'll just trade. They probably have another fin in hand. But at least they don't have a 1-drop in the graveyard, so Call of the Death Dweller is not as effective. Alright, so Varagoth, also a good one. So next turn I can set up Epiphany. For now play Acolyte, might as well use the Adventure first since we might pick up Stormwing Entity of the draw. So I can play Innkeeper and Fortel. And then we're hoping to find Toski to make use of all these creatures. If Varagoth attacks, I can double block it. Opponent does have a Call of the Death Dweller, but just gets back Finn. So, pretty straightforward trade. Opponent does get to kill both creatures, thanks to Death Touch, but didn't really need the Acolyte anyway. Strongly Entity, also a nice one. So, yeah, lots of Epiphany. Play Sentinel. And Toski right on time. So we get to play Toski. Hit with our two birds, draw two. And a Fae of Wishes we can also put to good use. So what do we want to search up, assuming we want to use the Adventure first? Could also play it as a creature, to be fair. But this seems pretty good too. And then Toski on defense, also quite useful. So what's the best I can do? Maybe Stolen by the Fae, bounce a creature, make a bunch of blockers. Don't hate that idea. Sleep could also be good. And yeah, opponent explodes. So the card advantage from Innkeeper and eventually Toski, paired with some mana ramp and Alrun's Epiphany for the win. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw with a fine opening hand. Turn 1 Sentinel, turn 2 can play a bunch of 1 drops. Opponent on a green-white snow deck with path to the world tree. Interesting. Yeah, I think we just want to go wide here. And we get to hit for one. And next turn we could already run out Toski. And 
Nightmare is a good one. Takes out Innkeeper. So I can play Toski, although I won't be able to attack yet. It's probably still worth it. And hope there's no removal. Has to be pretty specific removal for Toski. But Extinction Event is one potential option. Birth. Alright. So we're gonna get to draw at least three here. As we find another Innkeeper. Brazen Borrower could also be very useful. So we could go Innkeeper end of turn Brazen Borrower. So we don't overextend in the case of a Sweeper effect. Yeah, that seems decent. And then we can always use the Petty Theft Adventure if needed. Maybe bouncing the wall. It's gonna be Ashaya, Soul of the Wild. Okay. Sadly, because it counts as a land now, we cannot bounce it with Brazen Borrower. Uh, we can, however, bounce the wall. Or we can just play Borrower as a creature, which might be better. Alright, so... How about... We play Acolyte pre-combots. Just to trigger Innkeeper, see what we get. And then I'm fine attacking with Innkeeper alongside everyone else to draw a bunch of cards. And then if we pick up a Stormwing Entity, I can still cast it thanks to Seasonal Ritual. Alrun's Epiphany also quite strong and their Stormwing Entity. So yeah, I'm down to play Entity here. And then hope there's no Sweeper incoming. And next turn we've got a bunch of extra mana to cast Epiphany. So an Ashaya deck with white mana could be playing Ondo Inversion. Instead it's binding the old gods, taking out Storming Entity. But yeah, the damage has already been done here. As we can Epiphany. Attack with all. Draw a bunch of extra cards. And yeah, opponent concedes. They can take out my Sentinel, but we're just going to get to draw so many extra cards. Potentially find another extra turn card, and that should close out the game. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw, and we've got an excellent hand. Great with Entity here, since we've got both the Sentinel into turn 2 Heart's Desire. Play Entity as well as Acolyte to set up Entity, and there's another one. Alright, so... It's Storming Entity's time to shine. So first I'm probably going to go with the Heart's Desire into Entity, and then the turn after we can use the Seasonal Ritual. As we see, Path to the World Tree. So, make a token. And then we just want to land. Do I get to keep Toski? It's probably too greedy here. Three mana. I could see Cultivate maybe, or Isika, God of the Tree. Innkeeper to draw. So. Yeah, can still play Innkeeper as well here if we want. And then lands are good. Play Innkeeper. Hit for four. 
and then we can leverage Brazen Borrower's Petty Theft as well, which will trigger both entities. And Innkeeper for more card advantage. Not sure what to search up with Granted if we were to cast the adventure. Kolvori, God of Kinship. Alright, so how about I bounce a Sika to deny more mana? And then I can still, let's see, for two mana, play a Fae of Wishes, just hard cast. That doesn't seem terrible. Sure. Bounce a Sika. And probably not worth it to attack with the 1-1s. One we'll just send both entities. And our opponent already scoops it up, just too far behind on tempo, so they must not have a sweeper. And yeah, opponent's taking a hit for 8, and next turn probably just going to be dead. So our deck is incredibly punishing if we get one of those Stormwing Entity draws, but it can also play a longer game thanks to the card advantage from Toski and Innkeeper, and eventually Epiphany, a great way to close out the game as well with all our evasive creatures and Toski drawing more cards. So yeah, overall I've been very impressed by the deck's performance. Even though we didn't face any tier 1 decks, it's easy to see the power level of the deck, and it's been a while since I've last played with Edgewall Innkeeper, but that card's totally absurd as well. And then a great home for the Rose Thorn Acolyte plus Stormwing Entity combo that I've been meaning to play in a deck for a long time. And then also having the option of a turn 2 Stormwing Entity of turn 1 Sentinel into a Heart's Desire is also quite nice. So yeah, overall a ton of synergy and a lot of fun to play as well. So a great deck that I definitely recommend. So that's going to do it for today's gameplay. I want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.